Everybody. So today we're going to be doing our November watercoloring card kit, which happens to be Baking Fun. And it's a super cute Whiff of Joy stamp. And I've got my medium and detail water brushes. And I've got my ink palettes already filled up with my ink Distressor inks. And I've already stamped my cute little image on Canson Montval 140-pound watercolor paper. So let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to start this time by shadowing my image so I don't have to worry about touching any of the coloring I've already put down when I go clear around the outside. It seems to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to use my medium um, brush, and I've already gotten it, squeezed it and gotten it wet, and I've checked it on the back of my hand so it's only feeling damp, it's not leaving a line. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of my antique linen on the end of my brush. And I'm just going to go all the way around the image, except for the ground, which I'm going to do a different color. So I'm going to start right here by the edge of my beaters, and just lay down a little bit. And then I'm going to wipe the little bit of excess I have on my brush off. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to use the water in my brush to feather that away from the image out into the background. And if I get too much on my brush, um, every time my brush leaves the screen, I'm either wiping it off or I'm gathering more ink. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to grab some more and start another line. So I'm going to go up here and go along the top of the mixer up here to her hat. And then I'll wipe my excess ink off again and then just use the water I have in my brush to feather it away from the image until it becomes nothing. And in between the beaters right here there's a little bit of space so I'm going to get a little bit in between each little beater just a little bit there while I'm here. Then I'll continue on around in my around my image. So I'm going to start right here underneath her ponytail. And come up here up to her hat. And then brush it away. I'll continue around the hat over here to this side of the hat. And I try to do just little sections like, like the top of the hat here because if you go all the way around and then come back to the very beginning the ink will have dried and it's um, it leaves a line. It doesn't blend as well as if when it's wet. So I just do it in little sections like this like partially around her face here and then after I've blended that out, then I come back. Around the bowl here. And we'll go around the flower sack. And again, there's going to be a different color for the ground, so I'm not going to go all the way down. Just the edge of the flower sack will be fine. And then she's also got this little space right here between the bowl and her shirt that is actually background. So I'm going to fill that in. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to go do her face, and for that we're going to use, start with Tattered Angel, or Tattered Rose. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that ink palette. And I'm going to grab a little bit onto my brush, and I'm going to start down here on her foot. 
And I'm just going to lay down a little bit of ink right next to her pant leg and then brush that out here to the edge. And then for her arm, I'm going to start right in the crease of her arm and then I'm going to run a little bit along the bottom of her arm. And then I'm just going to use what little ink I laid down to brush up over her arm. And it's really light this time, but that's okay because I'm going to come back and add another coat. And we'll do the same thing for this arm. Whoops. That was her shirt. So let me grab my paper towel here and blot that off of there. So her arm is on this side right here and then her fingers. And let's get her neck. And then I want the light to be coming from over here and kind of shining more on this side. So I'm going to lay down my ink along her hairline here. Get that started a little bit. Okay, and I'm liking how pink her foot is. So I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to go up here and add some more to her arm. side. And then we'll get her face. Get down here in her neck and then run my ink right along her hairline like that. And then I'm going to use, I wipe my brush off and I'm just going to use the water in my brush to flick over to this side over here. Okay, and that's pretty good for our, our second coat. So I'm going to let that dry for us, her face dry again. And while that was drying, or that's drying, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add a little bit more, I think, to her arm right here. So it all depends really on how much ink you laid down the first time as to how many coats you're going to have to put on. Okay, that arm looks better. Let's go add a little bit more to her face. I'm going to go right along this edge again. I think I'll go down this side just a little bit this time because it doesn't seem dark enough on this side. Pink up this side of her face just a little bit more. Okay, that looks better. So we're going to let that dry a second and then we'll come back and we'll give it some shadows. Okay, so my face is still um, pretty damp so I'm going to let that dry a little bit more, but while that's drying, I usually skip around while I'm painting and paint different sections of um, the image and then I come back. So let's go paint something that's not touching her. So let's do this mixer right here. And it looks like the mixer I have painted with pumice stone. So I'm going to grab just a little bit of that on the end of my brush. And I want it to be darker right here where it's touching her foot and down here towards the bottom. So I'm going to put a little bit on there and then I'm going to wipe my brush off and then I'm going to use just water to pull it more towards the top of the mixer. So it's a little bit darker down here at the bottom but it's still not the color of the paper up here at the top when I get to the top. And I'm going to grab a little bit more and I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the mixer. I'm going to grab me a little bit of pumice stone and stick it down here at the bottom. And then I had still had paint on my brush so I went ahead and erased that or I wiped it off and now I'm just going to use my water to pull this up towards the top. Like that. And the mixer is pretty light in my coloring the first time so I'm going to leave it like that. But I'm going to go over here now and I'm going to add some shadows to her face. And for the shadows on her face, I have mixed Tattered Rose and Tea Dye. And if you've seen my previous videos, I usually do it on a piece of um, laminate um, paper. I just dip my brush in the Tattered Rose and put a bigger dollop on my paper. And then I add just a little tiny dab of the Tea Dye on there. But I got tired of doing that, so I now have a little spot mixed in one of my little ink wells that's empty. So I put a drop of Tattered Rose and then I put just a little bit of the Tea Dye in the, in the with it and I mixed it up so now it's just mixed all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that mixed paint 
and I'm going to go in and we're going to put some shadows down. So her neck's going to be shadowed and I want this side of her face again to be shadowed because I want the sun to be coming shining on from that way. So I'm going to go in and I've wiped my brush off and I'm just using the water on my brush to pull that shadow out into her face and soften the line. Just makes it a little bit darker on that side. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing to her arm. I want to darken up her arm, so I want her arm, inside of her arm, to be a little bit darker, and maybe the underneath, just a little bit. So wherever you want your shadows to be on your image is where you're going to want to add a little bit of this mixed color to your painting. And again, you can add multiple layers, so if you want it to be darker, you're just going to let it dry. And then you're going to come back and you're going to add a little bit more wherever it is you want to add some more um, deeper shadows on there. Darken up the underside of her arm just a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to let that dry a second. So let's say, while that's drying, let's go down and work on how about, oh, her pants. So for her pants, it looks like I've used shabby shutter. So let me grab that because we're going to paint her cheeks next and I want to make sure her face is dry before we add that. So I've got my shabby shutters. And I'm just going to grab a tiny bit on the end of my brush. And I'm going to start with this side of her pant legs being a little bit darker, so I'm going to lay my ink down there. And I'm going to wipe the excess off of my brush, and then I'm just going to smooth that out onto the rest of her pants on this little side here. She's got her leg crooked up right there. And I'll grab a little bit more for this side. And I want her pants to be darkest right here where she's sitting on her fanny. So I'm going to put some right there and maybe along the bottom of this leg that's on the floor. And then I'm just going to move that out into her pants just a little bit. Smooth that out. And it's just to add a base coat so that um, when I paint it, when I mix my two colors together, it won't be um, white anywhere when I just add a little bit more shadows. So that looks pretty good. I'm liking that. So we're going to let that dry. So we'll come back and add another coat. But up here on her face, I'm going to add some cheeks. So for that, I'm going to use festive berries. And if you don't have festive berries, you could use um, warm lipstick or... Um, Aged mahogany is a good one, just um, don't use very much, just use a little bit of the aged mahogany. So you're going to pick where you want your cheeks, and I want my cheek to be right here, so I'm going to put a little bit, and this is pretty pink, so I'm going to put just a little bit down, and then I'm going to wipe my brush off, and then I'm going to use just the water to make my circles a little bit bigger. And smooth them out a little bit. Okay, and you can let that dry, and then you come back and add some more. But I'm going to go ahead and do her tongue, too. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of my Festive Fairies and stick paint in her little tongue. Like that. So I got a little too close to her cheek. It's running just a little bit outside, so I'm just going to brush that a little bit. So for her pants down here that have now dried, I'm going to go ahead and mix um, shabby shutters and a little bit of peeled paint. So I'm going to dip my brush into my shabby shutters. And I'm just going to put it on a piece of laminated paper. 
and then I'm going to get a little bit of my peeled paint on the end of my brush and just mix it in with that just to add some darkness to it. And then after I mix it up I always make sure to um, wipe my brush off so it's just water again. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my mixed paint on the end of my brush and I'm going to add that where I want to add some shadows. Go inside here on their inside leg and add just a little bit, mostly down here in the seams of her pants and in the cracks. And then we're going to grab a little bit more and again I want her pants to be darkest down here on her on her vanny and along the bottom of her pant leg where she's sitting on it. So I'm going to go ahead and brush that up. Soften your line. Like that. Okay, now I think I will go add a little bit to her tongue because that should be dry by now. And then I'll let that dry and I'll add some more to her cheek. But while that's drying, let's do, and her pants are drying, let's go do her hat. So for her hat, I have used weathered wood, which is a nice grayish blue. So I'm going to grab just a tiny bit on the end of my brush. And I, I didn't do too much inside, but I wanted to add some some like some creases to her hat. So I went in here and see how her hat kind of dips right here. I wanted that to be more defined, so I came in and added a line right here. And then I came down her hat. And then I wiped my brush off. And I'm just going to lightly go back in and feather that out. But again, I'm going to wipe my brush off again because it's getting too much ink. And I just want to pull that ink away from that line until it fades out here into the paper into nothing. But you can see that there's definition right there where the little bump in her hat was. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So again, there's this little indentation right here. I want that to feel, feel like a fold. So I'm going to put my line in there. And then I'm just going to use water in my brush to lightly soften that line. But you can still see there's a little bit, it looks like it's creased right there just a little bit. I wanted her hat to appear, you know, more whitish. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing for the top of the hat. She's got some great lines up here, so I'm going to go ahead and add my weathered wood right in here in some of these creases. And the top of her hat will also cast a shadow, so I'm going to go ahead and go along the edge of her hat like that. And then I'm just going to use my water in my brush again to soften those lines. And if you get halfway across, my brush is picking up ink, so I'm going to wipe that off. And very lightly go back in and just tap the edges of those lines just to soften them a bit. Okay, and that looks pretty good for a first coat, so I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to go down here and let's work on her pants again. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of my mixed paint, and I want to darken up her fanny a little bit here. And maybe the edge of her pants cuff a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit more paint, and then flick it up here into the top part of her jeans. like that. That looks pretty good. I'm liking how that looks. So let's go and add a little bit of color to her cheek. And again, that was Festive Berries. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that on my brush. And I'm going to darken up this side a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to um, come back and I'm going to add some tattered rose on top of it to, to even out her cheeks a little bit. But while I'm waiting for her hat to dry, I also did this flower sack over here with weathered wood. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that. 
And I want my flower sack to be darkest along the edge. Oops, I got way too much paint on my brush. On the edge of um, the bag next to the bowl. Grab me a little bit of my weathered wood and I'm going to go right up the edge of the bag. Need a little bit more. Didn't quite get enough the second time. Too much the first time, not enough the second time. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe my brush off and then I'm just going to use my brush with water to lightly go over that line and pull it out here into the sack. So it runs over here to the other side and it makes it a nice light, light bluish gray on the far, far side. Okay, and that's good for a first coat. So we're going to let that dry. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add some more to her hat. Okay, and I want her hat too. She's got some little dips right here at the top of her hat. So I want her hat to have a little bit more definition there so it looks like it's curving in. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit to those little bumps and then go in and soften my line with just the water. Like that. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to do the same thing down here on this this side of her hat, I need to want to have a little bit more on there, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more color, and we'll go in and soften that line with the water. And then I think maybe this side of her hat right here maybe should be a little bit darker too. Put a little bit down here in the underneath side where it's going to be behind her head. Okay, I'm liking that. So I think I'm going to leave her hat just like that. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go add a little bit more color to my um, my flower bag or cake mix, whichever you want to call it. It didn't have too much color, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. Very lightly pull that away from your the bowl out here into the bag. Like that that looks pretty good. I think though I should maybe put a little bit up here in the top of the sack too. So let me get a little bit of color going up into this inside. Every once in a while, if you feel that your brush isn't flowing very smoothly like you, like it was when you first started, you may need to give your brush a little squeeze to add some more water. So that could be a problem if it's not just floating across the top of the paper as you need to give your brush a little bit more water in there to get it started. Okay, so let's go up here and add some color to her face. And again, I'm going to start with my tattered rose that I started with to begin with. And I'm just going to put a little bit on this side and then wipe my excess off. And what I'm doing is I want to, her cheeks are kind of blotchy looking, so I'm just using the tattered rose to go over those and um, give them a little bit more smooth finish there. And I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Go along the edge, put my tattered rose down, and then use what I laid down to pull out here. And I'm going to try not to touch that tongue because that thing's really red. I should have waited till after I painted her face and then added it. So that's a consideration for you when you're painting. You might want to wait until the end. Silly me, I didn't do that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm liking how that evened the cheek color out a little bit. So while that is drying, we don't want to do her hair because we've got right here next to her cheeks. So we're going to leave that. So let's go do, um, how about this little egg right here? So that little egg is pumice stone. So let me get that out. So we've 
just going to grab a little dot on the end of your brush and I laid that down right next to her hand and then I just very it just hardly changes color up here at the top it's darkest down here closer to her hand and I think I might have to give that another coat because my brush is really wet I squished it too hard let me dry it off just a little bit tap it on my paper towel a little bit more okay a little bit more pumice stone down here on the bottom of the egg wipe off my excess and then lightly brush over that line so that it fades into the rest of the egg that looks pretty good okay and it looks like I also did this spatula stick with the pumice stone so let's go ahead and get that while we're waiting for her face to dry get a little bit right here maybe a little bit underneath of her hand and then just use that little bit you laid down to drag onto the rest of the spatula like that that looks pretty good okay so for the batter it looks like the batter I used um, tea dye so let's go ahead and do that since it's not touching we can do these over here and this and down here on the bowl and then we'll come up and do the one next to um, the spatula okay so I've got my tea dye and I'm just going to put a little bit on each one of these little bits of batter and then I'll wipe my brush off and then I'm just going to lightly spread that out in such a, such a small area you may not have to come back and add any more to that it just depends on how much paint you put on your brush the very first time mine's looking pretty good so I may not come back and add more but again we're going to go down here here's some this dripped off so I'm going to add a little bit at the bottom and then use that that I laid down to brush up towards the top over here and do the bowl here we've got some that's dripped off the bowl right here she's a messy baker we're just going to spread that up cover up the rest of that little patch and let's she's got some messes here on the sides of her bowl so we'll go ahead and add a little bit those and then come back and just use the water to brush that further up into your white space of those little batter splatters and then we'll also get inside the bowl so we've got a little bit of batter in here Just spread that up towards the top. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna let that dry, and then we'll see if we need to add another coat to some of those splatters. But we're gonna go do her hair now. And so for her hair, I have used just walnut stain this time. So we're gonna grab a little bit of walnut stain on our brush. And I'm going to lay it down where I want it to be the darkest. So I'm going to start right here with her pigtail. And I'm just going to put a little bit next to that and then work that out here towards the end. Get that started a little bit. And again, I've squeezed my brush too hard, so I've got way too much water in there. I'm going to let that side dry a little bit, and I'm going to come back and add some more to that. So let's go over here and add some to this side. Get my brown started over here. And let's do her bangs right here. So I'm going to go right along the edge of her little hat. And then I'm going to brush my brush off. And then just use that that I laid down add a little bit of brown tone to the bottom down here and let's get right 
here. Okay, that looks pretty good for a first coat, so I'm going to give that a second to dry. And let's go down here and add a little bit more um, shadows to this, a couple of these little patches on the bowl for her batter. So we'll grab some tea dye. And I think this one here should maybe be darkened up just a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the edge of the bowl and just drag that up here to the side a little bit. Maybe darken up this side. It really is how much paint you have on your brush the first time you lay it down is how many layers you have to put on. It's also how you want it to look. It's your, um, your drawing, you're painting it up, so if you want the batter to be darker, um, you know, add more paint. If you want to make it add some shadows in there, maybe add mix a couple of colors together, try them out on a little piece of scratch um, paper, and then, you know, go for it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm actually liking how that looks. So while I'm still waiting for her hair to dry a little bit, I think I will go add, um, let's work on her shirt a little bit because my brush was really wet when I did her hair and so I, it needs to dry just a little bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and get out for her shirt. I used Rusty Hinge and it's a nice pumpkin color. And I tried to make this month's kits um, you know, kind of match. So if you bought both kits, you could watercolor um, both or you could Copic color both and they would go great together. Okay, so Rusty Hinge. And I'm going to start on her sleeve on this side. So I'm going to put that down here in her armpit. Like that. And then I'm just going to get my water on my brush and pull that over here to the top of her sleeve. So it's a little bit oranger over here. But it's way darker at the bottom down there. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit more. Remember, this is just my first coat, so I'm just going to start with that. And same thing for this sleeve. I'm going to go down this side of her armpit. And I think I'll maybe go around this little egg right here a little bit. Underneath of her arm, because her arm's going to cast a shadow. And then wipe my brush off. And then use just water to pull that away from that line. Let's add a little bit down here at the bottom. So I'm going to give this bottom crease right here just a little bit. Give those a little bit more. A little bit darker underneath here. Oops, and I painted the egg. Use some water to wipe that off just a little bit. Okay, that shirt is looking pretty good for a first coat, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. So let's go back up here and work on her hair some more. So I'm going to grab my walnut stain again for her hair. Grab a little bit on the end of my brush. And I'm going to start again under here, over here on her ponytail. So I'm going to add a little bit right next to those little hair ties she's got in there. And then I'm just going to use water to pull that bit down here towards the end. So it gets pretty light out here towards the end of her ponytail, but it's dark up next to those little hair ties. Because they're squishing them in and making it a little bit darker. Okay, and so I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. I'm going to... I'm going to put a little bit down here because it's going to be dark on the back of her head and then around these little hair ties. 
And then again, I'm just going to use my water on my brush to pull that ink away and into her hair. Now let's go do this other ponytail. Right next to her face. And then use that ink to brush out towards the end. Remember, I wanted the sun coming in on this side, so this end of this ponytail should probably be a little bit lighter. Okay, and then on this side, she's got this little piece that kind of curls up, so it's laying over the top of this little section, so I'm going to add some shadows right in there, right next to where it curls up, and then brush this little bit down here onto her bangs. And then it's going to be darker again next to her hat. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of color in there. Just add a little bit more. Okay, that's looking pretty good for a second coat. So I'm going to let that dry and let's go do her shirt again. So for her shirt, again, we're going to use the rusty hinge. I want to darken that up just a little bit more. Grab a little bit on my brush. Work that around that little egg. Yeah, a little bit more on this side over here. This egg and go a little bit underneath of her arm. And then lightly go over that line to soften it with just water. Get a little bit on her collar right there. I'm thinking that looks pretty good for her shirt, but she's also got this little patch down here on her pants, so let's paint that rusty hinge also. So I'm going to go in with my rusty hinge, and I want the patch to be darkest down here at the bottom, so I'm going to lay my ink down on the bottom, and then I'm going to wipe my brush off, and I'm just going to go in and soften my line and pull just a little bit up towards the top. And I tried not to get any on the dots, but if you do, you can always go in with a white gel pen or um, your Sharpie marker and just redo those. I left them white, so I wasn't too worried. And then also, since I'm still waiting for hair to dry, let's go do the beaters on this mixer over here, which were weathered wood. So let me grab a little bit, and I'm actually going to switch to my detail brush for that. And I'm going to give it a squeeze and test it on the back of my hand because I haven't used it yet. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my weathered wood, because those beaters are pretty small. And I'm just going to go in and color the sticks. Like that. No muss, no fuss. Okay, and then let's go ahead and go up here, and I think I'll add a little bit more to her hair. So I'm going to switch back to my walnut stain. So her hair's just not dark enough for me yet. It looks really cute that way. I could leave it that, like that, but I think I want to add a little bit more shadows. So I'm going to keep my detail brush, and I'm just going to go in and add a little bit more maybe to this side. And you can add as many layers as you want. Again, I'm going to darken up maybe up here underneath of her hat. Come down here. And 
darken up this little ponytail over here. And I put down a lot of ink on there, so I'm going to try to be careful. Wipe a little bit of that up on my brush and then wipe it off on my paper towel. Like that. And it's darken up this one that's underneath this curl here. darken up this little curly cue just a little bit. That one's pretty pretty light. So let's make this little, the curly cue flips up, but there's this little patch right back here that's um, kind of behind it. So I'm going to put a little bit of color back there. Darken that section up just a little bit over here to where her part would be. And then we'll use a little bit of ink here to darken up this little curly cue just a little bit. That's pretty light for her brown hair. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave her hair like that. Um, you can let yours dry if you want to add another coat, and then come back in and um, darken it up some more if you want. But let's go do um, the bowl. So for the bowl, and I'm going to switch back to, well, before I do the bowl, let's do, um, no, we got to let her hair dry. Let's do the bowl. So I'm going to switch back to my medium brush because that the bowl's pretty big. And for the bowl, I did um, peacock feathers for her bowl. If you don't have that brand new color, you could always do um, pine needles, maybe dilute it a little bit with water, and then maybe, or evergreen bow. It's kind of a bluish, both of those are bluish green. Evergreen bow is a little bit lighter than the pine needles. But the peacock feathers is really blue compared to, it's more blue than green than the other two. So I'm going to grab me a little bit of peacock feathers on the end of my brush. And I want my bowl to be darkest on the outsides. So I'm going to lay my peacock feathers down right along the edge and around these little splatters and along the bottom. And then I'm going to wipe that excess I have on my brush off. And I'm just going to pull that paint I laid down out here into the middle until it fades into nothing are pretty close. And I'm going to be careful going around my, my batter. And lightly brush that out. Okay, I like how that looks. So I'm going to do the other side. So I'm going to grab me a little bit more peacock feathers on my brush and go down this side of the bowl and then I wipe my brush off and I'm going to use my water just to pull that ink out here into my white being careful to go around this side of those little blat batter spatters too I wanted my bowl to be light in the middle of the bowl so I'm kind of being careful not to get it too much in the middle just a little bit Okay, and then we got to get the rim of the bowl. So again, I'm going to put a little bit here on the edge and then pull that towards the middle. And same for this side. And if you got excess, I'm going to wipe that off and pull that here to the middle. And I also want to do the inside of the bowl. So I'm just going to lay down some right inside the bowl I'm not so worried about doing any shading. I'm just filling it in because it's going to be pretty dark in there behind all that batter and stuff. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to give that a second to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to go up here and she's got those cute little hair bows up here. It looks like I painted those um, green too. So you can go ahead and use a little bit of your um, mixed paint if you still have that or you can use some shabby shutters or some peeled paint whichever you have available. And just color those in and then after I got my card all put together I went in and I put some stickles on 
those little hair tie things. I also put stickles on her hat and on this bowl. Give it a little bit of shiny stuff. All right, let's go add a little bit more. I'm going to darken up my bowl a little bit more. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of my peacock feathers on this side and pull it out a little bit more. And let's go ahead and get this side. Maybe underneath the lip a little bit more. I'm just using the paint I have on my brush to fill in over here around this little batter spatters. And I got a little bit on my rim of my bowl, so I'm going to wipe that. And then my brush has got a little bit of paint on the end there, just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just swipe over the top of the rim of the bowl so that it gets a little bit of color. Just a little bit. Like that. Okay, and I'm liking how that bowl looks. And here I got some, some blue onto my batter. Let me see if I can push that off just a little bit. Okay, there, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that leaves us with the ground. So let me grab, looks like I use walnut stain for that. And you could do the ground um, right after you did the shadowing, if too, if you wanted. I'm just going to do it now. So for the ground, I used um, walnut stain. And so let me turn my girl here a little bit. And I'm going to give my brush a squeeze so it's a little bit damp. And then I'm going to grab me a little bit of walnut stain on my brush. And I'm going to lay down where I want it to be darkest. And it's going to be darkest where everything is sitting. So I'm going to put some underneath of my bowl here. And then very lightly, I'm running out of ink, so that's that's perfect. I'm going to wipe off that little bit extra I have left, and I'm going to feather this line right here just a little bit. Let's see how it's darker underneath the bowls, and then it gets lighter out here towards the edge. That's the way you want that to go. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more walnut stain. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to lay it down underneath of my bowl and up here in between your pant leg. I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to use just water to lightly bring that line out away from the bowl out here into the into the white patch of the of the paper. Let's get a little bit up here underneath this batter. And let's go over here. We'll get right underneath of her pant leg. Up in between the mixer. I try not to touch too much of that green because you'll pick that up and bring it down into your um, your ground down there. And let's get a little bit underneath this batter that she spilled. Darken it up just a little bit underneath of this little mixer right here, just a little bit more. Like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that is our girl. We've got her all colored up. So let me grab the rest of my kit and we will um, put the card together. All right, so I've got the rest of my kit here, and let's see what we can put together. All this stuff over here. So first off, I can go ahead and attach this orange piece to my tan piece. That's a great tan piece with the, or the orange piece with the little flowers on it. That's really pretty. 
And I like the back with the bingo card, so you can use that on um, in the little Simple Stories um, albums. It fits perfect in the little pockets. Okay, next I'm going to attach my girl to her craft piece. Perfect. And let's do this green piece next. It looks like it is over here. So I'll put that about right like this. And I'm going to attach it to, no, I'm not going to attach it yet. I'm going to put this piece, this little striped piece, on this piece. And that goes about like that. Looks pretty good. <laughs> going to go on here like so. We got this cute piece, so let's attach this little swirly border, a loopy loopy border. And that is well, about right here, I would say. Like this. Okay, and then you've got your little piece of ribbon, which you had to cut yours. I've already cut mine. I'm going to put that right here like this, and I've got my handy dandy um, masking tape, transparency tape, and I'm just going to pick this up and run it to the back. And I'm going to put a little piece of tape on here to hold that down. And I'm going to go across. I actually think I'll put a little piece. I don't want it to go under, uh, sticking out this side, so I'm just going to put a piece right here in the middle, like that, just to hold it so it doesn't fall off, fall and wiggle around while I'm trying to do the other side. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and run this piece to the back, too. And we're going to tape that down, like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so then I'm going to add some adhesive to this, and I'm going to attach it to the card front. The card front, and you can decide which way you want your card to open. I usually have mine flip up, so I'm going to put mine like that. Then we're going to go ahead and attach her. So let's put some pop dots on her. I'm going to pop dots out. Pop dot her up. And then she is right on the little loopy loopy things. Like, like that. Okay, and then you have some great flowers that came with this. So I'm going to use my liquid Tombow Mono Aqua Liquid Glue to attach those. I'm going to start with this big red flower first. I want that to be mm, right there. Looks pretty good. And then I think I will attach the leaves next. And I, my leaves are craft because I already cut out the cute little, they were, your piece is like a piece of um, grid paper with, it's tan with a little bit of little speckles on it. 
but I ran out of scraps and I didn't want to cut a whole another 12 by 12 piece just to cut my two leaves, so I'm going to use the craft color. Just so you know. I don't want you to think I got a whole different. But I didn't see any sense in cutting out a whole, wasting a whole sheet of paper just for my two little leaves. So I traded. Okay, so I've glued those together. Then I'm going to stick them underneath this little red flower a little bit. And so those are kind of sticking up like that. And next I have a craft flower. And I didn't put my flowers on top of each other. I kind of off-centered them. So this one I'm going to go like this. You could just put them right on top of each other too. That would be perfect. And then next there's a little tan piece with little white dots, which is actually the back of the red piece. And that one I kind of centered right here on this little craft flower. Like that. And then for her cheeks, I use my Sharpie white paint pen and I shake it up always with the lid on first because otherwise um, I splatter it everywhere. And then you just go in and give your girl a couple of little dots for her white cheeks. And then this month you got um, a package of these new Say It in Crystals Prima rhinestones. They're really pretty. But there's only two of these bigger flowers. So when you're making your cards, you want to consider what other, you know, don't just decide which ones you want to put in the center of this flower first and then use all the other ones. There's plenty on here. It's just there's not three of these flowers, so you're going to have to use a smaller one or a different um, a different style in the middle of your flower. So I'm going to get mine out that I use, and mine are are missing some because I used them on the card I used to make for the blog. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off my little flower and they're all adhesive on the back. You just have to peel it off and stick it on. Like that. And then you decide what um, gems you want to use other places on your card. I'm going to put one of these cute little swirly ones over here. And again it's already adhesive. I'm just going to stick that. And it's really pretty. It's kind of multifaceted um, gemstone. It's really pretty. And then I think maybe... Mm, oh. See, these decisions are hard. They're just so cute. I think I will put... Oh, how about this little one here? Oh, maybe not. Oh, here it is. And I think I'll put that one down here in the corner. But you just have to go through your package and decide which ones you want on each card because there's only two of the flower ones and they're different sizes. There's more of these little multifaceted ones. You could use those in the center because there's actually six of those. But just something to consider when you're putting it together. And then I took my stickles and, and I added it to um, her little hair ties. I went in and just gave couple of little dabs on her hair ties and I added some to her hat kind of in the little folds. I didn't do the whole hat but I just added a little bit onto you know, where the creases were a little bit. And then I gave the bowl down here a little bit and again I didn't do the whole bowl I just added some sparkles to the sides and however you want to do it would be perfect. But it just gave it a little bit more character on my card. So that is our finished card and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye.